Despite recent peer-reviewed studies proving that curcumin, the active ingredient in turmeric, is more effective than Prozac at treating depression, the depression industrial complex continues to dominate. We've seen a 400% increase in antidepressant use amongst Americans. So now 10 to 12% of Americans are now on drugs like Prozac. What you're looking at is deep brain stimulation surgery. This is where small electrodes are implanted in both hemispheres of the brain, which are then connected to a neurostimulator, which is placed under the skin on the right chest. It's a device that's similar in size and function to a heart pacemaker. And it's been very successful in treating victims of Parkinson's disease. 80,000 patients worldwide have been treated with this so far, and it's been very successful. No arguments with that. But would you be comfortable with a technology that alters brain function, actually alters the behavior of brain tissue by stimulating it with these pulse frequencies? All very well for Parkinson's victims. Would you be comfortable if that same technology was used for people with depression or headaches? This is an article out of Scientific American, which talks about how this same technology, deep brain stimulation, via the method of implanting electrodes in people's brains, is being introduced into the field of psychopharmacology. According to the article, scientists are becoming increasingly convinced that the currents from the technology's implanted electrodes can literally reboot brain circuits involved with the mood disorder. And in this Scientific American article, they ask one of the scientific researchers involved in expanding this to the field of depression, Thomas Schleipfer, if people would be uncomfortable with the idea of electrodes being implanted in their head and used for electroconvulsive therapy. And uh, he basically dodges the question and says that it's been so successful for Parkinson's victims, so why shouldn't we introduce it into the field of depression? He also admits that it's a, a transitional technology, that in the future there are going to be more advanced versions of this, whereby depression is cured by electrodes, implanted electrodes, that are then remotely stimulated. And I guess the question is, is it really secure for initially 10%, eventually they hope probably more as they turn it into an industry, 10 to 20% of the population to be walking around with electrodes implanted in their brains that can be remotely stimulated? And again, this isn't in the name of curing horrible diseases like Parkinson's. Nobody's arguing that the technology isn't great for that. This is for people with depression and headaches. And we've talked about how, you know, it's the depression industrial complex. Depression seems to be going through the roof, even though our lives are longer, uh, more diverse, more complex, more comfortable than ever before. Depression keeps on increasing because we're increasingly told that every facet of our personality is a sign that we're suffering from depression, which of course is useful for the pharmaceutical industry in America alone, which makes 12 billion a year off antidepressant drugs. And this is going to be the next technological upgrade of that whole process. So would you be comfortable with 10 to 20% of the population walking around with electrodes implanted in their brain that can be remotely stimulated? Could this be open to abuse from both government's authorities and hackers. Well, that was certainly a concern for this man, 35-year-old computer hacker Barnaby Jack. He was researching how hackers and potentially governments could hack into pacemakers, defibrillators, and insulin pumps in order to, quote, commit mass murder via a worm implanted into the medical device. And he was preparing to do a show at Caesar's Palace about how these pacemakers, medical devices, could be hacked. 
using a wireless transmitter that could trigger a deadly power surge and kill someone from up to 50 feet away. But unfortunately, Barnaby Jack never got the opportunity to present that information because a week before the conference, he was found dead. And media reports when this happened back in July said that his death, given that he had no medical conditions, was, quote, shrouded in mystery. The coroner was very tight-lipped about giving away any information, leading even the police to suspect that foul play could have been involved. So while we're not saying that he was assassinated because he was about to reveal this information, it's interesting that he expressed these concerns about how pacemakers, insulin pumps, defibrillators, any kind of medical device could be externally remotely controlled and used as a weapon of mass murder. So given that these implantable electrodes are now being openly considered and tested on people with depression, we need to ask the question, are they safe? Are they secure? For one, given what Barnaby Jack exposed, which is that hacking these kind of medical devices was entirely possible. And two, of course, simply the big brother aspect of having electrodes implanted in your brain, not because of any dire medical condition like Parkinson's disease, but simply because you're supposedly unhappy. To me, that is the ultimate horror scenario, Brave New World, 1984, pharmacological potential for pharmacological dictatorship and scientific totalitarianism. This is Paul Joseph Watson reporting for InfoWars.com.